Hi, welcome back. This is the Frog Prince Part 2. Hopefully you've already seen the Frog Prince Part 1. Here we go. Unwillingly, the princess allowed the frog into the magnificent palace. He bounced up and down as frogs will when they are very happy, but she only glared at him dreadfully. She thought to herself, why should I have to keep my promise to this old croaker just because he fetched my ball from the well? Her father insisted, however, that she should be his friend just as she said she would. The frog hopped after her into the great dining hall, boing, boing, and immediately jumped onto the table. So, princess, he said, we shall be the best of friends for now. With a contented croak, he began to eat from her shiny gold plate and sparkling silver, silver bowl. Frogs do not eat very neatly, I'm afraid. And the princess, noticing how he smeared the food all over his face, turned away in disgust. She refused to look at the frog or speak to him, but she still felt sick just thinking of such an ugly creature eating with her. What a lovely golden plate, the frog remarked. It reminds me of your ball. You have us such beautiful possessions, princess. It must be nice to be a princess and have everything you want. If I had everything I wanted, the princess retorted, you would not be eating with me. The frog ignored her rudeness. May I have a drink from your cup, he asked politely. The princess was about to refuse, but her father caught her eye, and so she nodded. The frog drank thirstily. Perhaps it was because of that long hop from the well to the palace doors. Would you like to drink now, princess? He asked, nudging the cup back in her direction. You must be joking, she snapped. Princesses do not drink after yucky frogs. The frog sighed and continued eating, but soon he began to look sleepy. I'm tired, princess, he said. Will you take me up to bed? I could never have such a slimy frog in my bed, the princess burst out. Her father was about to scold her, but the frog beat him to it. Oh, careful, careful. Princess Fair, promises are more than air. What could the princess do? She had promised. So she ran up the stairs to her bedroom and all the way up, she could hear the frog hopping behind her, boing, boing, and leaving little muddy footprints, splish, splash, on the castle floor. She opened the door to her bedroom. The princess and the ugly frog stood in the doorway, looking at the princess's lovely room. Hung with silk curtains, beautiful paintings, and jeweled lamps, a thick, soft goose feather quilt lay across her cozy bed, and a full, plump pillow waited to support the princess's pretty head. The princess left the frog at the door and climbed into her beautiful bed. She wished the frog would go away, but he sat on the floor looking up at her. I want to sleep on your pillow, the frog said decidedly. The princess shook her head. No, please, you can sleep anywhere you want, just not on my bed. Please, you are just too disgusting and you will leave slime on my pillow. I want the pillow, the frog insisted. You promised you would share everything with me. The princess pleaded and cried, but nothing could change the frog's mind. You promised, he said, and promises are more than air. Finally, she had to give in. Frustrated, she climbed down and tossed the frog roughly onto the pillow and then climbed back into the bed herself. She tried to keep as far away from her new friend as possible. I wish you'd just go away, she hissed into the darkness. The frog was silent for a long minute, and then he whispered, Princess, there's one more thing. The princess groaned. Could I have a good night kiss? 
I have been a very lonely frog, and you did promise you would love me. The princess was so exhausted that she did not even bother to argue. In the dark, she rolled over and planted one kiss on the top of the frog's cold, wet head. Now please go to sleep, she begged. Good night, croaked the frog. The next morning, the princess woke to find the frog still snoring on the pillow. The princess watched him sleeping for some time, and she began to feel impatient for him to wake up. For she found that, gross as he was, she preferred arguing with the frog to playing by herself. It was so quiet without him croaking away. Finally, she poked him hard with her finger. Get up, you lazy toad, she said. The frog did not stir. So with the palm of her hand, she gave him a rough shove that sent him sliding off the pillow and onto the cold stone floor of her bedroom. The moment his little webbed feet touched the ground, however, the warty frog disappeared and, his, and in his place sat a little prince, rubbing his eyes sleepily and smiling up at the princess. Hello, princess. Thank you so much for keeping your promise. Who are you? She asked very much surprised. Why, I'm the frog. He responded, a wicked witch living in the forest turned me into an ugly frog, and only you could save me. I knew that your heart was just as golden as your plate in your ball, and I was right. Now I am free of her spell. He looked at her. Thank you, princess. Now I will leave you alone and go back to my home on the other side of the forest. Wait, said the princess. I thought you were, so, you were supposed to be my friend forever after. And promises are more than air, you know. The prince laughed. So they are. Shall we play with your ball? And together they ran down the stairs and out into the bright golden sunshine. They were friends forever afterward. And when they were quite grown up, they were married with great celebration and joy. They invited the entire kingdom to their wedding, not to mention the number of frogs and the prince had met during his long enchantment. They lived happily ever after, of course, and the princess was always glad that she had kept her promise. I hope you enjoyed part two. See ya.